The ocean is filled with creepy crawlers, nasty bottom dwellers, and ruthless predators. Join me as we learn about some of the most dangerous blokes in the sea. It's time for an episode of Dangerous Doobly Doos. Today's creature is responsible for at least 36 grizzly murders in the last century. Its signature is a very small trail in the sand and overwhelming venom in the victim at the scene of the crime. Its poison is so strong that just one shot can kill up to 10 adult humans, making it one of the most venomous animals on the face of the earth. Welcome to another episode of Dangerous Doobly Doos where we explore the world's deadliest ocean creatures and hope we don't get stung. Who's that Pokemon? It's the Cone Snail. Here is found one of the most terrifying creatures known to humankind. But don't let its small size fool you. With actual rotating treads for moving around, eye stalks for targeting, and a massive loaded cannon, this thing is the closest thing to a biological tank but where a massive M1 Abrams tank can wreak havoc and destruction with every shot, this little cone snail packs enough firepower to kill 700 adults with a toxin in its body. The attack is paralyzing to small prey and extremely toxic to us. The deadliest cone snail, in fact, found in the Indo-Pacific is called the cigarette snail, so aptly named because it delivers a payload so toxic that you would only have time to finish a single cigarette before passing away. Yeah. That's how poisonous it is. And these creatures can be found in tropical and subtropical environments, in Australia, South Africa, Southern California, and all across the entire Indo-Pacific. So these creatures are dangerous. But how, you may ask? It's just a little sea snail. How could it possibly be so dangerous? Well, the answer lies in its loaded gun. When a snail is hunting for prey, it extends its secret weapon. Well, it's hardly a secret weapon. It's a long bazooka-looking proboscis that hides a deadly stinger. A barbed hook-like hollow tooth is hidden inside, loaded with venom from a gland in the creature's radula. The tooth is then fired into the target by an extremely powerful muscle, maxing out at 400 miles per hour. The cone snail is actually accurate too, with the 60% hit rate in tanks measured by the James Cook University in Australia. Funnily enough though, their aim isn't always spot on. Where's the leak, ma'am? An acid trip reduces the cone snail's accuracy in hitting its targets. But when I say acid, I'm talking about carbonic acid from ocean acidification. Get your mind out of the gutter. As our oceans absorb carbon dioxide emissions from our atmosphere, the water and carbon dioxide mixes to form carbonic acid. And data has shown that carbonic acid makes cone snails hyperactive, making them move three times faster than normal but you would also expect a hyperactive snail to be more deadly, catch more food, maybe be more successful, more energetic, right? Well, it turns out that they catch way less prey because they're so antsy that they run around scaring off their prey instead of stealthily attacking. It's like when you're running out of energy to study and you take a coffee to give you energy, but you're too jittery to study now, kind of counterproductive. Turns out their stealth is the key to catching prey and that when they move around a lot, they're actually pretty bad jittery hunters. In fact, even though roughly 60% of the snails maintain a hit rate in a laboratory at the average rate, only 10% of the total snails hit their targets when carbon dioxide levels were significantly increased in the water. Again, this is likely because ocean acidification affects snail behavior. It weakens their shells, yes, but it also makes them hyperactive. This makes them catch less food and need more food to maintain their shells. More activity and less calories is no bueno, and it means that these snails are starving under increasing ocean levels of carbon dioxide. Okay, so these little tanks aren't exactly invincible, but cone snails have their own way to adapt. Deep ocean imperial cone snails have been found to produce two compounds, which are called genuinine and conazolium A, both of which mimic the pheromones produced by their targeted ocean prey, the worm Platinaris dumerelli. These pheromones attract their targets until they are taken out by the waiting snail's deadly stingers. And the same study found that cone snails that lived in shallow waters did not produce these two compounds, showing that different strategies for chemicals can exist across different snail populations living in different places. This also means that, hmm, 
Maybe these snails are able to combine different things together to form new compounds. Speaking of compounds, scientists have a lot to learn from these little snails. There is research that indicates cone snails may be able to perform chemical mixing in their own toxin sacs maybe even picking and choosing which agents they're using in each hunt. Their poisons have about 2,000 different polypeptide building blocks, which they can put together as like Legos and recombine in different ways, in different sizes and shapes and orders to attack different prey. In fact, scientists are still trying to understand how this works so that we might be able to create medicines from these potent neurotoxins in the future. But that's it for today's episode of Dangerous Doobly Doos. Remember, there are dangerous creatures out there, but they shouldn't make you feel scared of our oceans. Cone snails do not target humans so long as they are undisturbed, and they are generally slow-moving, peaceful, and passive, and will only sting in self-defense if disturbed. In fact, if you think about it, in the last hundred years, there have only been a handful of deaths due to these creatures, likely between 36 and 100, most of which were by accident or by mistake. Just make sure to think twice before picking up that beautiful bright shell in the sea. Well, coming up next, can you guess which creature this is? A lot of you guys have been requesting this one, so without further ado, I think you guys will be very pleased with what I have in store. Coming soon. And drop a comment below if you know what it is. As always, make sure to check out our online apparel store, moradis.com, for fresh merch that represents the ocean, makes you feel clean, and at the same time, protects our ocean. We donate a small portion of your sale to Oceana International, the largest ocean nonprofit in the world that takes care of the ocean legally and by biological conservation. Be proud of what you wear. Clean vibes, clean looks, clean oceans. As always, I'll catch you next time. And thank you for joining Dangerous Doobly Doos. Toodaloo. <gasps>